course, but not before I grill my first guest on his latest offering, Liver. Named one of Grant's best young British in 1993, before he'd even published a novel, Will Self quickly went on to earn a place among the premier British writers of his generation with his darkly grotesque style. Despite being no longer an enfant, age hasn't wearied him. Within the last year alone, he's published three books, the most recent of which, Liver, the aforementioned, is just out. It's a collection of four short stories, all of which feature the largest of our internal organs in varying states of disease and decay. Welcome to the book show, Will. Thank you, Mariana. Liver, choice title, um, but why the fascination with this particular organ of the body? Um, well, I think it, it, it's the biggest organ in the human body. The ancients believed that it was the seat of anger. What it does in the body is phenomenal. I mean, it, it's kind of, it's sort of oddly more important than the heart, which is just a pump. The liver is the, is the body's kind of refinery. It's its chemical refinery. It completely processes, uh, you know, is responsible for digestion. It's responsible for cleaning blood. It is just this most integral thing. It's also where all the nastiness goes through, yeah, isn't the, it, really? So toxic. was that, that, that was probably in the back of your mind somewhere. Yeah, I mean, without being sort of, sort of preachy about oh, this, um, you know, there, there is an enormous increase in liver disease for, for all sorts of reasons in Britain. I mean, it is a, a silent epidemic of, of liver diseases going on, and a lot of it, I'm, sadly, is to do with lifestyle, and, and, and some of it's to do with viruses that are loose in the world. I mean, one of the stories is told from the point of view of the hepatitis C virus, but it, it's not just liver in the sense of the organ. I mean, one of the stories is a, 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 about an elderly woman with liver cancer who goes for an assisted suicide in, in Zurich with a Dignitas type organization. And there, the sense of the word liver is as in somebody who continues to live. There's another story in the book, The Plantation, which is uh, loosely based, uh, I think it would be fair to say, on uh, the Colony Club, which is sadly perhaps not going to exist for much longer, the little seedy den that Francis Bacon, amongst mm. others, used to frequent, and indeed yourself. And I wondered if you were exacting some sort of revenge by disposing with the, uh, the, <laughs> the owner in such a kind of grotesque way. Well, I mean, I don't know whether when it's, it's not possible to libel the dead and, and uh, Ian Board, who for many years was proprietor of, of the colony room, which was this kind of cockpit, in many ways a kind of oddly admirable place. It was this kind of time capsule of what a future liberated society would be like. I mean, back in uh, the 1940s and 50s when Muriel Belcher, the self-styled Queen of Soho, presided at the colony room and Francis Bacon, John Deacon, uh, Geoffrey Bernard were among the regulars. It was this place where this high camp style, this very, very open, gay uh, atmosphere prevailed, this kind of uh, sense of license around drinking and sexuality was very prevalent. But I, I was taken there when I was a stripling of 18 in the late 70s. So a friend of mine was the barman there, and it made an enormous impression on me. I mean, I didn't come from a sheltered background, but this was of a different order of decadence. It was really quite an astonishing play. You, you see yourself primarily as a satirist, and I wonder if, if you feel that the world increasingly lends itself to your chosen form. Well, I, think, I, I mean, mean, credit crunch. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> you I, couldn't have written it. I think Hunter Thompson said, you know, that satire is difficult when, when reality itself has become so twisted. I, 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 don't, I think there's always the talk for a satirist to gain, gain purchase on our culture. There is always, I mean, to take the, the, the current crash in, in the world markets. I mean, you wake up and smell the coffee, you know, nobody had a plan around this. You know, in, during the boom years, the kind of ethos that, that, that central governments, that, that people in, in command of the economy know what they're doing is so strong, and yet then you see it yanked away. And in as much as satire is always about uh, you know, afflicting those people who are comfortable and putting that out. There's always a role for it. But not only do you choose satire, but you've also said that you don't particularly like naturalistic novels, and I wondered why that was. Well, I think naturalism, it's not that I don't dislike them. I think it's overrated. I think it's strongly overrated. I think that naturalism is, is an ideology of its own kind, and it, and it represents its own conventions. And, you know, supporters of a naturalism will rear back when you engage with them seriously about this and say, well, of course we don't mean that books are really like life. Obviously, they're artificial. But nonetheless, there is a kind of culture camp for kind of ideology that this is the highest form of writing, this kind of representation. And, and I, I think ultimately uh, it, 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 it's not about that. It's about, I think that naturalistic novels, and I'm, it's an idea I'm going to be developing uh, 
for a longer essay this, this autumn is, is about sanity, really, and it's about convincing people that they have free will, that they're in control of their lives, that their own depth psychology is discoverable in some way. Uh, so all lies, basically. I'm afraid so. I mean, I'm afraid so. I think most people don't know what they're doing, aren't in control of their lives, you know, and, and but writing books that say that to people are extremely disturbing. Despite using a, a typewriter to slow you down, you've managed to <laughs> write three books this year alone. And I wondered what you put that sort of speed of your creation down to. Uh, because it's not, it's not hard drugs anymore. No, it's certainly not hard drugs. I mean, I, I'd rather take the American writer Robert Stone's view on hard drugs. I admire them from afar. Um, so it's not that. And indeed, I don't think I would be writing at all if I'd gone down that route much further. Uh, I think I just feel slightly frog marched by the muse, but not in an unpleasant way. I mean, I, I, I'm going to slack off, don't worry. I'm only going to publish one book next year. Because honestly, yeah. I don't know if we can guarantee like a slot every time. No, I, I think like there this. is a certain, uh, you know, sort of fatigue in the public. I think that, you know, and I, and I accept that. I mean, it's, I feel very strongly about, about Liver, though. I mean, I felt strongly about the, about the, the novel that came out in May as well, but, but Liver, I, I feel quite passionately about as a text, and I, I, I beg the public to lend me their eyes a little more. Thank you very much, Wilson.